Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be doing this little pumpkin. A nice little autumn gift. Nice little desk ornament. We're going to be using a little one by one by four inch. It's basswood. For pin blanks, I buy mine on Amazon. They're inexpensive, and they've been really good basswood. You can see how light in color they are. They carve real nice. This is a great beginner's project. I'm using just a, an X-Acto knife and a number 11 blade for this project. This is perfectly adequate for the job. So you can see I'm just going around taking the bottom corners in, constantly spinning the piece to keep it uh, symmetrical. Make sure everything stays balanced. Aiming for a cylindrical shape. Now you see as I'm moving across the line of the bottom where the pumpkin's gonna be, I'm starting at the corner and I'm nibbling across to get this line. Uh, another way you can do that is lay it flat on a table, a nice steady surface, and cut across the grain just with a straight cross. And that'll be a stop cut and you can cut up to it. You will always want to find your center on all your sides. This will help keep that shape, the shape that you want. Now this is, I, I call this power grip. It's a paring cut and it is a very powerful way to, to uh, to cut through the ingrain of, of wood. Ingrain is very tough to carve, but with a razor, like this is a razor blade, basically, number one, uh, number 11 exacto razor blade, it's thin and it's sharp and it makes cutting this easy. Having this grip gives you a very powerful cut. Now you can see I'm leaning in, and that little cross on the top is getting smaller and smaller. So I'm moving in on it. Now this, this cut is the push cut or, or pivot cut, and it takes a little bit more push to it. Not as, as strong or as fast as the, as the uh, paring cut. But I probably use this cut the most. Going for that round shape. Basically cutting away from where those lines are to the next line. I'm just trying to round my way from one line to the other. This is great practice doing this project for a beginner carver. One thing is a beginner carver they tend to, a beginner carver will tend to make things uh, not round them out. They'll tend to be square or chunky looking. This project forces you to round it out. It's a great, great way to learn to round things out. Here I'm just undercutting the pumpkin a little bit. 
definitely helps in the way it looks. Now here we go, reestablishing those lines right where they are, and then split these lines in half and these lines in half. Now these lines will fall right on the corners, important for a new carver. The corners, if you ever get critiqued by an experienced carver, they're gonna look at the corners of the piece of wood and see if they're rounded, if see if the subject matter is rounded. So here, by having the crease line right on the corner, it forces you to make that a low area in the carving. So it reinforces rounding. So as you all know, I'm in the process of carving an owl in, in detail, super real, realism, and uh, I'm getting ready to seal prime and, and paint. So this is a, a good break um, when you're doing something so detailed. Doing a little project like this is uh, refreshing and it's fun. I really enjoy doing little things like this. And I'm gonna make a bunch of them and give them to the people at the office. So I recorded most of this at two times the speed, but here I'm, I have it at actual speed. Um, this is a really important part, cutting in the lines for the grooves. Now, I'm holding this in my hand without any support. I do have my finger braced against it, against the, the workpiece itself. As a beginner though, I'm just holding this up for the camera. Put, put it down on the table. Uh, it's an extra step in safety. Um, it's just really easy to slip. Um, I'm, I'm being really, really careful, uh, and I've been carving for a long time, so, and even then, I get cut every once in a while, not very often, I get cut more in the kitchen than I do wood carving, but, uh, you want to set it on a flat surface when you're going straight in and pulling a line. So I'm just coming down both sides of where I cut that line straight in on the pencil line and making sure that that line goes all the way down to the base. So it looks like the pumpkin is complete and sitting on, a, on that little stump. Now I have had people ask me, uh, why an X-Acto blade? For a beginner, it's perfectly acceptable blade, especially for a small carving. You can get very detailed uh, with a number 11 X-Acto blade. It's sharp and then when it gets dull, it can easily be changed in just a second. I don't want to overwhelm a new carver with the whole sharpening and stropping and buying an expensive knife. They can figure out if they like carving just with this little exacto blade. And if they do like it, then they really like it when they get a really nice wood carving knife. I remember back way back when I first started carving. 
I actually bought a, a cheap carving knife and it was really thick. The blade was thick and it was terrible to carve with. But luckily, I had a cousin that had a good carving knife. I was just discouraged. I was about done with it. And he let me carve a little bit of wood with his carving knife. And I saw what a, a nice carving knife could do. The number 11 Exacto will, will be pretty close to uh, what a, a good knife can do. It, it's, a good knife is going to be even better. But that thin blade and that sharpness really makes it easy to cut and to work with. Here we got some two-part epoxy. This is Magic Sculpt. You could really use any kind of two-part epoxy mix. And this is what we're going to make the stem out of. And so I noticed a little, just a dab of water on the wood itself. And I'll crimp this in. And it will really grab. Using water in the silicone tool, really, it, the, the epoxy will stick to things. It'll stick to almost anything. So you, you want to wet the tool and that'll keep it moving along so it doesn't, things don't get all stuck to it. Here I'm, I'm pulling the epoxy just right down into the grooves and then making the lines or the grooves into the stem. And then coming back and taking out some of the uh, epoxy that I don't need. Now as this dries, it does get stiffer. And if you get it before it completely dries, it's actually not bad to carve. If it dries completely, it gets very hard. It's brittle. Uh, so it becomes a lot harder to carve, but it is carvable. All right, I'm gonna put a little paint on it. And you can see I'm not putting any kind of primer or anything. I'm just going straight with a little water and some orange paint. And usually for the, the little carvings like this, I use uh, just hobby store paint, just cheap paint. This here is flow medium. Uh, there's there's all kinds of different names for 
uh, flow medium. But it, it helps the paint basically flow off the brush onto your project. Uh, it helps eliminate lines between brush strokes. Uh, it flow medium has been around for a long time and uh, it, they have all different kinds of names. I think all the manufacturers have a different name for it. Uh, but usually the word flow is in it somewhere. Now, as you see, I only put a drop or two of flow medium in, a little bit of water, and then the paint. Sometimes the water on the brush is, is enough, but I always wet my brush before I put it in the paint. This paint, acrylic paint, usually dries in uh, 10, 15 minutes. So if you're painting for more than 10 minutes, rinse out your brush, uh, at least have a jar of, of water or something by, by you and, and rinse it out. Um, if you're gonna be painting for long periods of time, you wanna use soap and water. And uh, I know some people actually use hair conditioner if they have an expensive brush uh, with all natural hair, that makes sense. Uh, you can you can spend a lot of money on high quality brushes. Uh, most of mine are just uh, hobby store brushes. M most of them are uh, nylon, uh, and I get pretty good results with that. I have some watercolor brushes that are sable that are quite expensive. Uh, and I would not use acrylic with those. I tried using uh, here a little uh, sage green. Uh, wasn't happy with the color. So I tried to darken it up with some browns and I really kind of liked the gray. So in the end, you'll see me just keep wiping it because I the, gr the gray highlights the natural gray from the epoxy, uh, I kind of like that. So I'll let this uh, paint set up and I'll go back in and uh, touch it up and paint it some more. Well, I went ahead and painted the bases, painted them a gray. I think that looks pretty good. Oh, there's a little pumpkin. That's made out of just some leftover epoxy. I'll put another coat of paint on it. Maybe I'll make it a tiny jack-o'-lantern. I'll see you next time.